the five, I believe, very basic fundamentals of my drawing style, which I'm about to demonstrate, can really be applied to any subject matter. And two of them really need to be considered before we put the pen on paper. The first step is I need to carefully observe my subject. And this overlaps with the second step, which is particularly to find the forms, to get a sense of the shapes that we're wanting to draw, either shapes as complete holes or as individual components. For our subject, we have one of the corners of the former Imperial Library in Berlin. Observing this, we can see that we have a rounded corner, we have sculptures, figure sculptures on the top, we have decorative columns here on the corner, we have windows that line up, but because of the angle here, this one doesn't line up. We have Corinthian columns and we have pilasters, which is the word for these shallow squared off columns. And in the lower half, we have this banding. The second way I draw the way I do is to start off visualizing the forms, the various shapes of our objects and the way the forms fit together around each other. I often try to imagine looking straight down and seeing a plan. So for instance, for here, and so we have this squared section here with two columns underneath it. So we're looking straight down on top. And then we have this shallow curve for the corner and we have another two columns here. We don't really see what happens here, but the thing that it is important to realize before we start drawing is that these two columns sit back from the edge. So in fact, this line here, which it's easy to presume is part of the facade of the building, particularly looking here, doesn't in fact exist. And what we have is this wall here is actually set back from this wall and this wall. So taking the time to understand the forms of the shapes of the buildings I'm drawing, but also the various additional shapes that are stuck on in some sort of architectural decoration and how they align with each other is very important if I'm going to be able to do a credible drawing of them. It may be something I spend 10 minutes on. It may just be 30 seconds. It depends what my subject is. And having been looking at the forms, I also now, as I'm about to start drawing, work out which forms I'm going to draw first. Because I draw directly in ink and there's going to be no erasing, every line I put on the paper will be there at the end. So I can't do a big rough out of blocking out shapes with lots of rough guidelines, which I know I'm going to erase at the end. I need to be a little bit careful with the lines I make. And so what I'm doing is I'm breaking down to some of the smallest forms that we have. So I'm looking at this column as a form and this column as a form, but I'm also looking at this section where the two columns join together as a form. I'm looking at this down here as a form. And once I draw some of the forms on, once I get these forms drawn, I can then align these forms with them, which will help me plot this curve properly. Having explained these first two easy steps, I can start to draw. I do believe one of the biggest problems I see with drawing is that the pen has hit the paper before the eyes have seen enough detail to know where those lines on the paper should be put.
And I hope you were able to just observe some of the more obvious moments where with the forms I, I was aligning the various parts. But it brings me to my third step, which is probably of these five easy steps, the easiest. And that's I draw nice loose lines and I don't get overly excited if they're not quite right. But I keep working them and repositioning them until they're right. Now, there's obviously a limit how many lines we can draw in the one place. But generally, if I don't get a line quite right the first time, that line in the wrong place helps to highlight for me where I need to be moving my arm, my hand, the pen to get the line in the correct place. And I did it most obviously pretty much with the very first line I drew, which was this one here. And you can see here now at these lines, they came out too much to the right instead of vertical. But I corrected them and made them vertical. And now with a little bit more detail added, those wrong lines have just merged with the other lines. And the brain will always go to pick up, to focus on the lines that are in the place it expects them to be. And therefore those other lines, it will just presume are just part of the background noise of lines in the less important parts of the drawing. Here, you'll notice that I forgot to allow for this balustrade here. But by the time I put these circles in, this isn't going to be nearly as obvious either. I made a bit of a mess with this capital here. In fact, there are so many places where I could point out and say, this isn't quite right. But because I kept adjusting lines to get them in the right place, my forms basically overall are in enough of the right place that they look okay. And then by the time I start to add this sort of detail in across the whole drawing, that further attracts the eye and all the, if you like, false start lines become even less important. With my drawing style, people keep saying, oh, it's so accurate, but it's not. It's just that it's a style that I think disguises and hides and attracts the eye away from mistakes better than other, if you like, more precise styles. And therefore it works really well when we draw directly freehand in ink. But it also means we're not agonizing over, do I keep this line, do I erase it? Oh, I better erase it just to be sure and draw it again. It does help us to keep moving, to keep progressing our drawing. And so far, this is just over 15 minutes. I think it's 16 or 17 minutes or something. So I'll do a bit more and then I'll talk about the final two steps, the final two principles, ways of thinking, ways of drawing that I use in my drawings. fourth easy step is not one that's so easily demonstrated in this drawing, in this subject, but this is where I go to draw the effect of something rather than the actual detail of the object. And this is particularly good when we have a massive detail that's either too small to draw accurately or the distance we're at means that while we could draw it in another drawing, in this drawing, it's very difficult. So this crowd of people here is probably the best example I have of that, where really I'm just representing them by very small gestural lines that basically represent torsos, heads, limbs. It's the same principle that I would apply, say, to leaves on a tree. I'm going to use it when I draw these figures up on the roof line or the parapet. So I'm just gonna finish these details and then I'll tell you and show you the fifth element that I consider very much when I draw, which I think is very important for how my drawings turn out.
The fifth step I think is fundamental to creating drawings the way I do is to have a focus on depth, on three dimensionality and on distance. That means that where we have in architecture, that means taking every opportunity to add the lines that are so easy to miss, which actually create the sense of three dimensions, particularly when we have, say, windows that have depth being cut into the walls that they sit in, and we don't look at them directly on, but from an angle, in that case, we do get an edge. And if we draw that edge in, then it creates a much stronger sense of depth of three dimensions. And it also gives us somewhere to put hatching or mark a tone as well to create shadows. Can you see how those lines help this to have a sense of sitting back further? Can you see how adding these lines lets these things now come forward more or go back underneath? The other way I like to create the effect of depth because we are talking about creating an effect of depth. There really is no depth. This is a two dimensional sheet of paper. So we want to create something that looks on the page like there's real depth as if the object is a lot further distant. And that's to change my drawing style for things further away and to use a lighter pen. So because I used a, a 0 0.3 millimeter pen, I might actually switch to a 0 0.1 to do this building here. And I'm going to draw it with a lighter touch because we don't see the same detail from things further away as we do from things closer. So to draw with less detail, creates the illusion that this is further away. Our brain reads less detail and a lighter line as, oh, that's further back than what's closer and with a darker line. Let's have a look. And so hopefully this building has a sense of sitting back, that there is an effect created of depth of distance by using a few techniques with my line. G'day, I'm Stephen Travers. While this isn't the totality of how I create my drawings, these five fundamental factors, careful observation, finding the forms and the relationships between the forms both before I start drawing, drawing with relatively loose lines, not being afraid to correct ones that aren't quite right. And then when I do need to draw things that are more complex or too small for normal line work, I work at creating the effect. And one of those effects I work at creating is a sense of distance, which comes up over and over again in the urban landscape. See how that tiny bit of line work for the shadow reflecting the pretty much overhead sun really helped to anchor that very gestural cyclist in our picture. I hope you found this interesting. If you want to have a go drawing this corner of the former Imperial Library in Berlin yourself, you'll find it, as always, on my channel community page. But whatever you're drawing and however you're drawing it, make sure you have fun. I'll see you next time. Bye.